tazama hii LCT Karagwe Diocese channel. Usisahau kusubscribe, like, share na ku comment. Tazamaji na mfuatiliaji wa channel yetu ya ELCT Karagwe Diocese. Mimi ninakusalimu popote pale ulipo. Lakini kama ambavyo unaona tupo katika mazingira ya vichaka na hapa si pengine ni chuoni karuko chuo ambacho kinashughulika na kilimo na mifugo. Na nipo na watu wawili. Mkono wangu wa kulia wa kwanza kabisa anaitwa Askofu Benson Bagonza ni wa diocese ya Karagwe ya kanisa la Kinjida Kirutedi Tanzania. Lakini nipo na Professor Jan Hansen ambaye ni Rais wa ETI Educate Tanzania na mimi ni Mera Bubira Kashekwa afisa habari wa Diocese ya Karagwe ya Kanisa la Kinjili la Kiriteti Tanzania na nimeona nitambulishe kwanza halafu tutaendelea kuulizana maswali lakini baadhi ya maswali tutalazimika kuulizana kwa Kiingereza ili mwenzetu profesa aweze kuelewa vizuri so good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon yes and uh, i would like to know where did you get to to know about each other where did you meet and <laughs> etc <laughs> can you say it i can yes please can you okay yes, so. <laughs> okay okay yeah uh, i remember in 2008 mm. arriving on epiphany mm. and meeting you uh, through the university of st thomas's program for the engineer students to yeah. install solar water pasteurizers. Yeah. Okay, that was 2008. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe Bishop Bagonza, what do you remember? Prior to that first trip, when Professor John and engineering students from the University of St. Thomas, mm. I was in the US. Mm. And then I briefly met her when she was seeking a place where she could go with engineering students. <laughs> I drove up from Madison, Wisconsin, and she drove down from Minnesota. We met somewhere in Eau Claire, something like that. St. John's. St. John's, yes. yeah. Okay. And then we had a lunch together, and we spoke, and we arranged how to bring students <laughs> to Caragua to practice about uh, establishing water pasteurizers to create source of safe water for the people and we chose Buela Nyange Girls Secondary School and Karagwe Secondary School to be the place where these engineering students could come and do their projects. Isn't it right? <laughs> wow. Yes. yes. Very good. <laughs> Apart from how you met, now we have Karuko. Who brought this idea of having Karuko? The idea of having Karuko or Karagwe University College at that time. Started way back in 2006 at the Synod Assembly. The plan was to establish a constituent college of university, of Tumaini University Makumira, whereby a constituent college for Tumaini could be established here in Karagwe, specifically dealing with three things, environmental sciences, agriculture and animal health. So after the Synod decided, um, the late head teacher of Karagwe Secondary School, hmm. late Kabarim Joseph, hmm. he took upon himself and me uh, to start troubleshooting how we could realize. Then in 2008, during Professor Jan visit with engineering student, I gave him a copy of my PhD dissertation on theology of development. She read it and she was fascinated by it and therefore joined me to sort of solidify the ideas from the PhD dissertation on theology of development in Tanzania to develop a concept and to put it in a concrete ways of establishing this university. Because sometimes you read something and you know it has all the points of success, yep. everything. Yep. To make this a uh, agricultural hub mm. was your vision. Yes. It, and the African way, yep. not how a developed country would come in and do it, but, mm. but how you would do it with your priorities. Yep. And as I read that, I, I realized this has success written all over it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Utilizing the local knowledge of the mm -hmm. people in Karagwe, mm -hmm. utilizing the local policies of our government to 
to see if we could make Karuko a hub of agricultural transformation, creating leaders of agriculture in Tanzania, but also making agriculture a fun, mm -hmm. something that somebody does with fun. Yes. By, by, by utilizing this area to be a hub of transformation for rural development in this part of, of, part of Africa. So really it was a great idea, somehow too idealistic, but this far we have come. Yeah, this far we have come. And um, I'm grateful for what we have achieved together. Yeah. There's one more element, yeah. and that is that the person who wrote the book, wrote the dissertation, is entrepreneurial, is creative, is a leader, and that, that would be you, Bishop. And uh, yes, mm -hmm. and so when you have a living example, and you have someone with that level of motivation and vision, and not only that, but then an implementation style mm. that lets other people do their job and not micromanage everything, mm. then you know it's going to work. And yeah. it has. That was 2008. Mm -hmm. It took us two years mm -hmm. to troubleshoot, yeah. work here and there. Yeah. We engaged the government. Do you remember the Minister of Agriculture at that time? Engineer Christopher Chiza, yes. yes, and later on his deputy, yes. who was the deputy minister of agriculture, I think it was Adam Malima. You went to see him in his office in Dar es Salaam. Yes. Yes. And uh, yeah. then in 2010, that's when we had the first ground-breaking festival here. Yes. Yes. When we brought Honorary Council of Tanzania, Cheryl Berg, mm -hmm. right here, Minneapolis. In Minneapolis, from Minneapolis. And we had a great celebration here where we laid the foundation for the first construction of the buildings for Karuko. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Maybe people from outside would like to know how is Karuko doing right now because we are in <laughs> 2024. Well, there is a lot to tell about Karuko. Mm -hmm. and what is going on in here but um, part of the vision has been realized another part of vision was partly abandoned our initial idea was to make this a constituent college of university to mine university Makumira but then in between the government decided to uh, either to cross down some of the constituent colleges or make it so complicated to register new universities and that's when a decision was taken that instead of making this university we make it just a college a tertiary education college where students for diploma levels and certificate level could enroll under NACTE mm -hmm. in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Yeah, training is going on. <laughs> we train students in agriculture, we train students in animal, animal health, we teach students about entrepreneurship, we teach students about environmental sciences, and all sorts of things are going on right here. Yeah. The things that impress me uh, have to do with the practical entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah. So yesterday when we went up to the farm plots mm. and we saw the livestock and mm. the farm plots and all the pineapple and the coffee and all the different uh, crops and then we know that that has a practical application because you're teaching cutting edge methods. Mm, 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 and then the second thing, of course, is mm, the MEL program, mm, which is a micro-enterprise mm, loan, mm, and uh, starting up new businesses with that. That is not what every college does, mm, and so I think that makes it very unique and very practical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay.
Benson Bagonza wa Daisy ya Karago ya kanisa la Kingiri la Kiruteri Tanzania. Na bado tunaendelea na safari. Na tunamshukuru Mungu kwamba tumepata miavuli sasa tunaweza kuendelea kutembea. Bishop Bagonza. Mm. Uh, the Karago Diocese has so many projects dealing with. How are they doing and um, if you have something to tell apart from Karuko now we are dreaming of rock. Please our approach to development is holistic. We care for the souls, that's our primary objective. We care for the mind, we care for the whole physique, and therefore we have projects varying, uh, stretching from spiritual, from the general well-being of a human, human person. And uh, Karuko is just one, but there are others. Uh, through our partnership with Educated Tanzania, also we have been able to deal with different projects. We have dealt with books at Bueranyange. We have dealt with providing books and equipment for Karuko. We have dealt with water. We have dealt with energy provision. We have a big facility here to provide power through solar and soon we are embarking on a larger on a larger scale project uh, which is rock rock is a rural opportunity center we are establishing a factory to process fruits tropical fruits from this area into a juice and other products and we are doing this out of our concern that producers, small-scale farmers in the rural areas are being exploited by the middlemen. So we thought Karuko could establish a rock center whereby these small-scale farmers would be able to determine the price of their products and to benefit from their toil. Yeah. And um, maybe in some years to come, what should we expect? What should the world expect from Karagwe? Mm -hmm. Maybe in my mind is two things that we should expect. Number one, we should expect a happier farming communities in Karagwe. People who go to labor in their farms, produce products, sell them at a better price, improve their lives at home, improves their farming activities, and therefore they become happier. Mm. That's one that should be expected from this area. Mm. But also, uh, Karagwe, in my view, should become a model. Mm. Should become a model, a society that is striving to transform rural development through agriculture. And therefore, those who would like to learn how to transform rural agriculture, rural development, we expect this to be a center of excellence where they can come, learn, engage how to do in order to transform rural communities. Or maybe, Professor, what do you say? <laughs> That's hard to add to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's hard to add to. But uh, I think the happier is a good mm. is good mm. when we talk about economic stability mm. they can make more money so mm. that they can have medicine for their children education for their children mm. things that make the family more stable <laughs> And Professor Jan, now we have male programs or projects. Can you please talk about it a little? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, Mel Breed uh, served on the Educate Tanzania uh, board of directors. He's been a friend of Karagwe for a very long time and been a friend of Educate Tanzania. Very generous life. Um, very kind, very gentle person, mm -hmm. and he shared his reef resources out of a reflex. So when we looked at Kuruko, Mel and I had talked for a long time about helping graduates get a micro enterprise loan. 
And after Mel passed away in 2021 from COVID, we implemented a program for Karuko graduates to apply for funding to start up a business. And they had to know what the goal was, what the budget was, was it sustainable, gender equity, justice, and did it help the community? And I'm very happy to say that there are nine new businesses started up mm -hmm. and that they're all repaying their loans. Mm -hmm. And those funds will be used to support new businesses in the future. Mm -hmm. So that is a very good legacy. And it's also very optimistic and hopeful. Is there something to add, Bishop Bagunza? Oh, yes. Uh, Mel Bridge he started as a personal friend then became a friend of the diocese, then became a friend of ETI, then became a friend of individuals, and now is a friend of people whom he didn't even know. <laughs> yeah. A friend of the unknown. <laughs> Through his wealth and generosity, he had offered uh, this program by which graduates of Karuko are invited to submit business plan, apply for loans, to start business, and business should be related either to agriculture or animals. And then they do and return that loan, loan slowly until they create. So we are creating a young generation of business people who are uh, oriented in agribusiness mm -hmm. and animal businesses mm -hmm. and that is very very important so today we had a special a special memorial service here at Karuko mm -hmm. as you heard Mayor Breed passed away in 2021 during COVID and uh, he was cremated and part of his ashes were dedicated to be kept here at Karuko because of his good partnership with this college. So his ashes were laid today at a memorial site here at Karuko where we are going to build a special center for male for graduates to be able to use that house at that center to plan their businesses and activities. So it was somehow somber today, that's why we are dressed in black to remember Mary Breed and his generosity, a humble man that impacted many lives and touched many lives here in Karagwe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, may his soul rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Um, back to Professor John. <laughs> now we have Rock. <laughs> Can you please um, tell us about Rock? But what do you expect from Rock? What we expect from rock, that's a, that's a good question, yes. isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as with every transformation, the expectations continue to rise and grow as we move forward. But at this point, um, the bishop had already mentioned family stability and happiness and uh, care for the people, the small people, mm. meaning, meaning the people who get exploited and shoved to the margin. This, the rock will give a place to bring crops and make processed food from that, which adds to the family happiness and adds to the family stability. I see it doing nothing but growing. And I think that with the farming in Karagwe, the expectation is, is that it would grow and grow and continue to be an economically viable business for this area and an agricultural hub. Rock is a, is a huge idealistic program which we are trying to cut it into pieces <laughs> for yeah. practical purposes. Mm -hmm. And one practical piece is construction of this factory which will do food processing, add value, create jobs, create activities, and thereby sort of implode within Karagwe. Farmers will be motivated to grow more products. Business people will be encouraged to start businesses. Young people will be involved in food processing and thereby the whole cycle really 
will manifest to bring a positive change and transformation in this area. We are grateful up to now for the government of Tanzania for granting us a, a certificate to start processing this, uh, this project. We are meeting here during this week for the summit, which in my view will be final in terms of deciding what to do. And uh, we are meeting with engineer, with architectures, and uh, the site has been cleared. And therefore we look forward really for a groundbreaking ceremony sometime soon. And there, there will be roaring. Um, it's a multi-million in terms of Tanzanian shillings because we need to purchase equipment, we need to construct this factory, we need to hire, we need to create small contracts with small-scale farmers of how to collect those products. So we are talking about Liare, uh, a 24 hours, 7 days, 12 months activities <laughs> yes. which will keep us busier in Minnesota at Educate Tanzania, <laughs> in New York at Architectural Design, in Caragua at Caruco, mm. and everywhere. So mm. this really is a, is a milestone step that we are taking this week. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. As we go to an end of our interview, I would like to hear your word of thanks to the ETI supporters, Bishop Bagonza. You're welcome. Well, um, I would like to thank Educate Tanzania Board back in Minnesota. But people may know that Educate Tanzania, Karuko, Karagwe Diocese, now Rock, is a product of selflessness decision. Professor Jan was a university professor at St. Thomas University. But upon captivated and hijacked by this vision, she resigned from being a professor and formed what now is called Educate Tanzania Incorporation. Not knowing whether she will be able to succeed, risking a benefit as a professor, she was able to put up this very now growing uh, not-for-profit not organization in, in, in Minnesota which is partnering with us to rearrange all this, what you can see here. And therefore, I would like to thank you personally, to thank the Board of Educate Tanzania, and to thank all those small and large donors mm -hmm. that they donate their money, they donate their time, they dedicate their wealth towards Educate Tanzania in order to benefit these people who are unknown to them. You know, the life of saving the unknown is the best life that I can always envision. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much. Back to you, Professor Jan. Um, anything to tell before we sign out? All I say is it's been a two-way street the whole time. Mm. What we've gained has been equal to what we've given. Mm -hmm. And we are so encouraged by the people on the ground here. So you thank me, but I thank you. And that means for all of Karagwe. It's a beautiful, beautiful vision. And it will be. I never doubt. It will be. Yep. Thank you so much. Um, tazama gina mfakili ya jwa channel yetu ya ELCT Karagwe Diocese. Mimi ni nani hata ni siweze kuwashukuru hawa wapendu ambao ni likuwa nao. Kwa kwanza kulia kwangu sasa hivi ni baba skofa diocese ya Karagwe. Benson Ibagonza. Lakini pia uh, kulia kwangu zaidi ni Professor John Hansen ambaye anatoka USA. Hapa ni Marekani. Lakini pia ni Raisi wa Educated Tanzania Initiative. Asante ni Sana, kwa kwa na sisi. Asante Sante, sana. Kwa heri. Kwa heri. <laughs> Thank you. Una tazama, channel. Usisao subscribe, like, share na comment.